away, walk away from the fray. When structure falls and all else fails, we will build it once again. We can climb high, higher than before. We could stand by while it burns to the floor. The we cannot fly. We will build and the wounds will mend. Here and today we're here with something a little bit different and we are here with how to paint your PC. More specifically, we'll be covering how to paint a laptop today rather than a desktop. Now, whilst the ideas and concepts will be the same between the laptop and the desktop PC, a few things will be a little bit different. So let us know down below if you want to see us do a full guide on how to paint your desktop PC. And if you do, let us know if you want to see that. Also too, let us know what colour you would want it to be. Otherwise, with that being said, let's get into what we're doing here today and start off with the rationale behind this type of a project. So before we would even go ahead and consider painting a laptop, we really need to understand why we would be doing this. Are we doing this to cover up scratches, dents and just damage on our computer? Or are we doing this to go ahead and make this a unique looking device? If you're just after the uniqueness, there are also two lots of other ways other than painting a computer to go ahead and do said tasks. Like on, for example, our Ultimate Ultrabook, we went ahead and got a skin made for it to go ahead and give it a different look. So there are the skin options. If you run something like a more mainstream computer such as a MacBook Pro or even something like the Dell XPS lineup, you can actually also to get cases that will give you a more custom look without having to physically stick something to computer or put something over the top of it. Also too, one final option is using something known as Plasti Dip as opposed to paint. The positive thing with Plasti Dip is it can come straight off, it's like a skin but in a spray can so you spray it on like paint, however once you're done with it you just peel it straight off and you're all good to go. Now if you are trying to cover up damage with this, these same options that we've just mentioned can also to apply but also to paint can be a little bit better as it can help to fill in some of the little dents and damages in your computer. But now that we understand what we're doing and why we're going to be doing it, let's start jumping into what we actually need because there is a lot of things you need to do when painting a PC. But the first thing you need to understand and actually want to consider is what paints you'll be using. Will you be using auto automotive paints or off-the-shelf spray paints. Now for this project we're going to be going ahead and using automotive paint for a number of reasons. The main reason we're going to be using it is just I have a ton of them lying around in the garage and I wanted to do this project so automotive paints is the way to go for us. But if you just want to jump down to your local paint shop and grab yourself a standard set of spray paints you'll be just fine in doing that. The main benefits of automotive paints are usually well in the more automotive space being things like a lot more weather resistant and a lot more durable is definitely a positive. Also too, automotive paints are usually a little bit more customizable. Now what do I mean by that is, well, if you have a body shop or a paint shop local to you, you can usually take a paint code found in a car and actually go ahead and get a custom colour mixed up as opposed to your more standard run of the mill spray paints. One final difference between the two is definitely the price. One of these sort of base coats that we're going to be using today runs anywhere from $30 to $40 here in Australia as opposed to a standard coat of spray paint that will run you around $15, maybe even $10 if you can find them in a cheap spot. So price is also too one thing that you do want to trade off with. However, the results of automotive paints usually look absolutely awesome if done correctly and that's what we'll be doing here today. Alrighty guys, so let's take a look at what we're going to need to paint our PC. As you can see by the shopping list, there is definitely a whole lot of things there. Now if you check down below in the description box, you will find not only the written out version of this list, also too you'll find a link to an app Amazon shopping list where you'll have most of what we have here today, as much as I could find on Amazon.com. For those writing down the shopping list, you can pause it right now. And for the rest of us, we can go ahead and continue the video of pulling apart our PC and getting it ready for painting. 
And with that, it's about time to pull our computers apart. However, I do need to give the general disclaimer that when you're pulling your computer apart, you should be careful and I'm not responsible for any damage you do to your system. We will be pulling these computers apart for a number of days, so do make sure you have plastic tubs and other things around to put components in and make sure you label anything. Once again, I just want to be fully clear, I'm not responsible for the damage you do to your systems by following this guide. I've had definitely a lot of dead systems and also too I've been in a lot of training to teach me how to fix computers and how to troubleshoot them if they go wrong. So you do need to take into consideration this is more of a pro level mod than just sort of upgrading the RAM or something more basic than that. Not to mention I'm not a painter at all so my sort of methods and techniques have sort of been built up by a lot of driveway and garage paint jobs rather than learning the proper techniques. So the basic idea by my techniques are based on what most professionals do as well. So just clear, I'm not responsible for the damaged computer, I'm not a professional painter, and also too, I have extensive training in repairing computers, as that is sort of what I do for my job. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with our paint job. Now before we get started in pulling our computer apart, what we want to go ahead and do is make sure everything is backed up on it. Because we're pulling this apart, there is the chance of something dying and we don't want to have any data loss because it absolutely sucks, trust me on that one. So go ahead and grab yourself an external drive or maybe even grab your server or something like that and make a full backup of the C drive. Windows 10 has an awesome utility that allows you just to back up the whole system or you could use imaging software such as the Kronos True image to go ahead and back up your system. But if you're running Windows 10, simply follow these simple steps on the screen now. Search for backup in the start menu, go ahead and open up the said Windows 10 application and go ahead and follow this simple on-screen wizard to set up a backup of your PC. Once the PC is backed up, we are ready to go. What we're going to do is shut down the computer and remove the battery. Then we're going to go ahead and grab another computer, tablet, laptop, phone or anything like that and look up a guide on how to disassemble your particular computer. Computer. If you don't have a lot of experience with disassembling computers, try and find a step-by-step -step guide to remove the whole components. Once the computer is disassembled, we are ready to start our prep work. But first, make sure all the disassembled parts are in a special box, either labelled, bagged or something of the combination of them all to make sure you know exactly where they go and where they came from when you were pulling them apart. As I can guarantee you, in three or four days time, once the paint is cured and ready to go, you'll have almost no memory of where those screws came out of and how anything goes back together and it's vital to get the computer back together otherwise you weren't successful with your mod. If you're unsure where to find a step-by-step -step guide, iFixit has a lot of awesome guides, so I'll definitely say start at iFixit and then go from there with your guides. Alrighty, so at this point our computer should sort of look like this, a pile of, well, bits of plastic or metal depending on your laptop. Now we need to go ahead and figure out what we're painting and what we're not going to go ahead and actually paint. So for this project, we're not going to be painting the keyboard, it's sort of an obvious thing, and we're also too not going to go ahead and paint the sort of little trim piece that was up the top, mainly because it has a whole bunch of little holes for speakers and I can't be bothered punching them all out once the paint has set. So we're going to leave those two bits aside. Now we need to go ahead and remove any logos, feet, pads and any Wi-Fi antennas. As a lot of notebooks that are sort of of this age have big weird little rubber pads and they also do have antennas in the lid to go ahead and give it Wi-Fi connectivity. We want to remove this and any other pieces of electric PCBs as not to damage them when doing our paint job. Alrighty guys, so at this point we're almost ready to start prepping our stuff ready for the paint job. Now at this stage we need to mark out any significant parts of damage and actually go ahead and repair that. What we're going to be using is some body filler. Much like repairing or fixing a car, we're going to need to use some body filler to fill in any large large gaps or gashes or even broken bits of plastic to make sure the paint is alright. However, taking a look at our system, we'll be able to go just fine by just using the primer to fill in any gaps. So for us, body filler is not necessary in this particular project. But the stages of using body filler, much like any other car, is pretty simple. What we're going to do is obviously open it up, take our little mixture and mix them together to make your little 50 mix, I believe it's 50-40 or something like that, depending on what brand you go ahead and 
and bite and basically fill in the little gaps. Just remember to bog lightly or use body filler lightly because you don't want to spend all day sanding it off because it's just going to get really tedious. You can always put more on but it takes a whole bunch of time to take more off. So for me, I like to try and use as minimal as possible on the first run, sand it back, put another layer, sand it back and we're all ready to go. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and jump outside and get to painting. But before we do, make sure you change into some older clothes as you don't want paint sprayed on your nice clothes. So make sure you get some older clothes on to start your painting. Alright guys, so we have jumped outside, we got ourselves some 1200 grit sandpaper. We also too got the other parts such as the lid right here that we prepped a little bit earlier and also to the base that we prepped a little bit earlier. There's still a bit of work to do, however we also too grabbed ourselves a bucket of water, about half a litre or two a litre in there, not too much is needed for this project. Also too we grabbed ourselves other components such as this little uh, trackpad bit if we try and get this in focus. This is the little uh, clicky bar down at the bottom, we took that off so we could paint that separately and we also too grabbed ourselves this little toolbox mabob to go ahead and place everything on top of when we work. Alright guys, so we're now going to go ahead and remove the actual logo of the Ace of Branding. It can be a little bit tricky to do at first, but what we want to do is grab our Stanley knife and just slip it right underneath the little Acer logo branding. Some brandings will be joined up all together and will make it super simple and super easy to remove from the actual laptop. However, some will be separate like what we have here and all we need to do is simply remove each of them very carefully and stick them on the other side. Once that's gone ahead and done, we can go ahead and sand our PC. We don't want to sand this too heavily and we want to use as light grit sandpaper as possible, stepping up the process. So if you start with 1200 grit, move to 1500 grit to get a very nice finish. We want the finish of this to be as smooth as glass, any bumps, scratches and nicks being taken out with this lighter grade sandpaper. Once we've done that, we can rinse it down with that bucket of water that we have here so we don't waste too much water and move on to the other part. We only want to sand the parts that we're going to be painting as we'd sort of be wasting our time and scuffing up a surface that doesn't need to be scuffed up. Now we're going to go ahead and cut our piece of coat hanger wire in half like so and make a hook at one end. We're going to hook our pieces of computers onto this and we're going to use that for painting. Repeat the same steps for the top and the bottom of the notebook. We're doing this so we don't have to lean our pieces of computer on any parts anywhere and we can have them hanging up from a suspended place. We're going to go ahead and bend the end like so, very simple with this coat hanger wire and then we're going to go over and actually hang it on our DIY stack. Now this is just a simple light stand that we converted as you can see here up close into our paint stand. Now we took a piece of duct tape right here and just taped it to the back of our computer. The reason being it was dangling around too much. As we can see here we just went ahead and put the wire through the holes in the existing light stand and as you can see it's done a really good job. You can DIY this out of anything you want but this is what we went with here today. The light stand wasn't being used and is a little bit broken as we can see in this shot so we decided to use this for a paint stand. And just before we go ahead and paint don't forget some wax and grease remover. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our etch primer. Make sure you go ahead and use the correct primer for the correct product. Also too, make sure you give it a really good shake up. We don't want to have any bits of paint not shaken up in the bottom. As we can see in this shot, once we see little dimples in the bottom of the can, that means everything is shaken up and nice and ready to paint. If you don't see those dimples yet, keep shaking, which means everything is ready to go. We're going to go ahead and start off painting with really, really really light plates. We just want to dust on this primer very lightly at the start to go ahead and get going. We're going to do it on both sides a number of times and this is what we should be sort of seeing after the first coat. As you can see it kind of looks just dusty and there's just barely enough primer to make it visible on the surface. We're going to go ahead and give it a one minute dry time and then we're going to move on to the next coat. We can go a little bit more heavier on with this coat and we can just keep going until we end up with a nice etch color primer surface. As we can see here we're moving in all directions and shooting from all angles as we don't want to miss any sections when painting our devices. It's important to go from all angles because you're going to be looking at this computer from all angles. Once you get to the third or fourth coat you should be seeing something like this. Still a light and dusty surface however a lot more primer coloured. 
Now you may have also too noticed me holding this rag and wiping the end nozzle with this rag. The reason being is I actually use it as a tack rag to stop paint building up and I rub it like so on the towel to stop anything building up. When we're done we should see something that looks along the lines of this, a nice primer coloured paint job. Nice and even and no blotches anywhere. Same on the other side, no runs, no imperfections in our primer coat. We also do need to take care of any little accessories we wanted to paint as well. Now we can move on to the base coat. We're using an acrylic satin black and we're also too back with our tack wrap. Make sure you give the can a really good shake and we're gonna go ahead and hit the base coat with a really light dusting of paint. Make sure this coat is extremely light as we are now in the base coat and any mistakes that are made cannot be undone unless we let the paint dry and we start all over again. We're gonna apply this three to four coats and we're gonna allow it to dry for about five minutes between each coat. Once we do that, we're going to continue going in smooth, straight motions, making sure not to spray in weird angles. We also do want to make sure we paint from all different angles and we should end up with something that looks a little bit like this after the second coat. Nice and sort of just dusted on. After our final coat, we should see something along the lines of this. A nice, uniform satin black finish. And now it's time to move to our acrylic Clear coat. We're going to go ahead and be using this colour spec 1 and we're going to be using our tack rag once again. We're going to make sure it's all well shaken and we're going to go ahead and start hitting our coats of paint. We can go a little bit heavier with this as this can be taken out if we do make a small mistake but just try your best not to make a mistake. One thing to note whilst going out and painting with your acrylic paints, if that is what you are using, you do have to make sure that it is legal in your country to be spraying acrylic paints outside. Some countries it is illegal, so do check before you spray and you better avoid trouble. We're gonna go ahead and allow 15 to 20 minutes to dry and apply three to four coats. They say two to three, but we're gonna go ahead and do three to four. We're gonna hit it with another coat and let it dry. Once we finish up with all the painting, we're going to make sure that all our cans have no paint left in the tube. Hold it upside down and spray it out like so. Alrighty, so it is now 9.59am and we are done with all of our painting. And we'll just go ahead and do a quick jump cut. And now it's 9.46 on the Wednesday and we started this on a Monday. We've left it plenty of time to cure and this thing has come up very nicely. Now as we can see just here, it is relatively reflective but it is not fully kind of glossy and a glassy finish. We also do have a funny texture left on the actual surface. So what we're going to do as we can see in these B-roll shots is polish it right up. But nevertheless, just out of the can, it does look pretty epic. A really nice finish for a nice little laptop right here and I'm actually really surprised just how well it came up without any extra work needed on the parts. Alrighty guys, so we've gone ahead and let the paint cure and now we're inside ready to go ahead and do our final polishing steps. Now this step is totally optional. At the moment we have an awesome kind of wrinkle sort of satin finish on our paint job and it would be decent enough to get you by. It actually looks not half that bad. However, we're going for that full gloss look and we need to go ahead and polish it up to give us that shine. Now for today we're using some kitten cut and polish as well as some turtle wax to bring out the sort of waxiness and waxy look of the actual paint. If you're going to be using this system as a daily driver, so a laptop or tablet that you're going to be having on the go with you, using a wax may not be the best idea as it's going to get on your fingers and rub off relatively quickly. Now with that being said, turtle wax is a relatively hard wax and will give you a fairly decent finish that should last you a fairly decent long time. If you want that sort of wet paint, sort of uh, watery look on your system constantly, something like a Carnuba wax or a more natural wax will definitely give you that result. But however, today we're going for something that's a little bit more durable, so something like the Turtle Wax series will give us that little bit more durableness. Now obviously it does come down to personal experience, some people have had a terrible experience with turtle wax other people have had a decent experience I've got some lying around so we're gonna be using that and some kitten cut and polish to sort of remove that layer and give us that nice smooth look so that being said we're gonna go ahead and get started also too before you do get started make sure you hit this with some wax and grease remover to get rid of any fingerprints and finger oils or any dust and dirt and stuff that has gotten on it between the paint drying and getting to this stage
Alrighty, so we've gone ahead and waxed both the lid and the palm rest. Now, usually you need to give it about 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes to go ahead and let the wax dry off a little bit before we can go ahead and rub it back. Now, this will depend on your climate and where you're going, so usually try and follow the instructions on the back of the little uh, container if there are any available. Otherwise, wait for it to be a little bit dry to the touch, then you can go ahead and buff it off. And with that, we've completed our paint job. The only thing that is left to go ahead and do now is go ahead and reassemble your laptop and turn it on and hopefully everything starts up. If you disassembled everything properly according to the how-to guide that you went ahead and followed, everything should turn on no problem and your computer should be exactly where you left it a few days ago. Now with that being said, there are a few things you may want to consider before doing this project and even after doing it. So we'll start off with what you should do after it. First off is keep this thing clean because fingerprints on a really shiny surface is gonna look pretty bad. Also too, you may want to pick yourself up one of these clear coat pens which is essentially that clear coat layer that we painted on the laptop except in a pen. So if you do happen to get a scratch in it, you can use this guide to stop the scratch either spreading or fill in this small gap to stop the scratch looking so obvious. Also too, you usually want to leave the paint to cure for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. We left ours for 48 hours because I had to go off and do stuff the next day, but 24 to 48 hours is where you should be leaving it to cure for everything to end up nice and smooth. And finally, don't do this sort of project to your daily driver unless you're guaranteed that it will work because there is a chance that you might finish this project and the computer may be just flat out dead for some unknown reason. So do make sure that it might be an older system or something you don't care as much about because you're not going to get any warranty for one and also two, it's going to be pretty hard if you want to part it out and sell it for, well, parts here and there. Otherwise, this project PC was already dead and already on the way to the scrapper so for me it doesn't really matter but damn it has turned out very nicely. Also guys, do remember your preparation skills are what's going to determine the final outcome and always make sure you have the appropriate protection when doing this particular project. Things like masks and gloves are almost essential to getting a decent job. Not only are you going to get the paint on the computer and not in your lungs and having computer parts match the colour of your lungs are probably not the best idea and most people would probably recommend against it. Otherwise, guys, that is our guide on how to paint your laptop. The same sort of process will also to apply to a desktop but let us know down below if if you want us to go ahead and do a how to paint your desktop PC. If you do want us to do that, let us know also too what color I should paint that PC. And otherwise, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one for another video. When the colors fade and it turns to gray, we'll calmly walk away, walk away from the fray. When structure falls and all else fails, we will Stand by while it burns to the floor that we cannot fly.